All right, Sooner Nation. Well, to keep their Big 12 championship hope dreams alive, they would have to stay right nip and tuck with Kansas State and winning all their ball games after a loss by Kansas State that kept Oklahoma in the passenger seat to hopefully keeping their chances at another Big 12 championship. Two teams remain in their way, though. Kansas, Oklahoma State, and TCU. They took care of the Oklahoma State issue. It wasn't easy. Oklahoma, in fact, never led in regulation. They did, however, get it in overtime. Tell you how it happened. A very exciting Bedlam matchup. As Bedlam was just... It was just Bedlam. As the Pokes choke it away to the Sooners. All this and more coming up next on Boomer Sooner 1982. Alright, Sooner Nation, let's review what happened last weekend on Owen Field Senior Night for Landry Jones. We start at the beginning of the first quarter where we had, after a Oklahoma missed field goal, that doesn't happen very much, but after the missed field goal, Oklahoma State gets the football, matriculates down the field, Joseph Randall with, with a one-yard touchdown run, with 7.28 left to put Oklahoma State up 7 to nothing. Oklahoma State would end up getting the ball back after an interception to Landry Jones. Moving it up to a three-yard touchdown run for Joseph Randall. 14 to nothing. Cowboys with 5.26 left. And it's just pure just madness in Norman. But the people in Stillwater are going crazy too. But Oklahoma would not end the quarter scoreless. They would get the ball back to Michael Honeycutt, who would this time cut it through the nets. 25-yard field goal. It is 14-3 with 13 seconds left in the first quarter. Jumping into the second quarter, Quinn Sharp, the OSU kicker. Just like Michael Honeycutt just kicked a field goal, he'll do a field goal of his own. 42-yarder for Quinn Sharp, 17-3, increases the Oklahoma State lead with 11-19 left. Then Oklahoma start, finally finds the end zone. It's a 14-yard touchdown pass from Landry Jones to Trey Millard. It's 17-10, and the ball game is in the favor of Oklahoma State. But Oklahoma does have 10 points, 6.53 left in the game. Then with four with 242 left, Landry Jones and Jalen Saunders hook up nine yard touchdown. Now it's 17-17. Now there's a little bit more of a we can do this thing going on. Then a little bit later in the little bit later in the quarter, then it's Joseph Randall for his third touchdown of the first half. Four yard touchdown run. Joseph Randall with 123 left. There's, tw it's 24 to 17 at this point. Then, towards the end of the half, with just 13 seconds left, there's one final touchdown. It is Landry Jones to Kenny Steele's 15 yards. It is 24-24 at the half. Entering into the third quarter, the exact first official play after the kickoff is a 75-yard touchdown pass from Clint Shelf to Justin Stewart. 34, 31-24 now at this point, 14-18 left, 14-48 left in the third quarter. Next possession for Oklahoma with 12 minutes left in the quarter, a 45-yard field goal by Michael Honeycutt 
is sent through the uprights. It is 31 to 27 with, like I said, 12 minutes left. Then a couple of minutes, then a long time later in the quarter, 417 actually left in the quarter. Finally, Joseph Randall with his fourth touchdown, seven yards. It is now 38 to 27 with 417 left. And it's not looking good for Oklahoma at this point, down 11. But Michael Honeycutt, once again, cuts the lead in half with a buck 22 left in the third quarter. A 30-yard field goal by Michael Honeycutt. And we'll take you to the fourth. And then in the fourth, the second, the second play of the quarter. After a sack, causing a fourth down, Oklahoma State has to punt. Then is Jalen Saunders, 81-yard punt return. For the touchdown, it's 36 to 38 with 14:36 left. Oklahoma then goes for two. Landry Jones and Justin Brown hook up again. Two-point conversion is good. We're all tied up at 38s. Then, with 10:41 left, it's time for the Walshing machine. J.W. Walsh, a two-yard two touchdown run for him. It is now 45 to 38 with 10:41 left in the game. Then in the fourth quarter, which is four seconds left in the game, you gotta well, you have a wall, uh, the Walshing machine for Oklahoma State. You gotta have the Oklahoma belldozer, right? Well, you do. Four-yard touchdown run, four seconds left, touchdown Oklahoma, game time. It is 45-45, and we go into overtime for just the third time in Oklahoma Sooner and Bob. Well, I guess fourth fourth time in Sooner history, third time in Stoops history, and it starts with a Quinshell, Clint, uh, uh, Quinn Sharp, sorry, field goal, twenty six yards through the uprights for Oklahoma State, forty eight to forty five. All Oklahoma has to do is just get a touchdown, and they do an eighteen yard touchdown run by Brennan Clay, fifty one. 48. Oklahoma wins the barn burner. Oklahoma wins the shootout in Norman and keeps their Big 12 championship dreams and hopes alive. The statistics were very good for Oklahoma. Landry. Landry Jones in his final home game in Owen Field. 500 yards, three touchdowns, and a pick in this game. Schilf, Clint Schilf. Had 253 yards, a touchdown, and a pick in his own right. Running the ball was Brennan Clay did it for Oklahoma. 13 attempts, 59 yards when it was all said and done, and that game-winning clinching touchdown run. Joseph Randall, 21 attempts, 113 yards, and four touchdowns. Justin Brown for the Sooners had 10 receptions, 162 yards, zero touchdowns, but he did catch a two-point conversion. To keep the Sooners in the ball game. On the other side, for Oklahoma State, it was all about Josh Stewart on this night. 11 attempts, or 11 catches, I'm sorry, a buck 50, and a touchdown. Defensively, for both teams, Aaron Colburn was the Oklahoma Boomer Sooner Defensive Player of the Year, the player out of Owasso. Aaron had four tackles, two sacks, and an interception that ended up being a huge play in this game. I mean, if Aaron Culver doesn't get that interception I'm talking about, Oklahoma State probably, probably kicked a field goal in that, and then there's no need to go into overtime, and Oklahoma State would win it in regulation. As far as defense, it is all about Justin Gilbert. 11 tackles and one pass breakup. Could have had another one, or at least an interception, but Kenny Stills, like I said, with 13 seconds left, just makes a game changing move and ties the game up 24-24. But Gilbert did have 11 tackles, a pass breakup. Uh, the kicking-wise for Oklahoma, it was all about Michael Honeycutt, 3 for 4. He kicked them from 25, 30, and 45 was the long for Honeycutt. For Sharp, it was all about a 26-yarder and a 45-yarder is a long. Uh, Punting-wise, it was all about Tress Way tonight at this night. Two attempts. He had an average zero inside the 20-yard line, but he did get along at 54. Quinn Sharp did the other part of it. Five attempts, 
53.4 yards on average, one inside the 20, 59 alone. And that one inside the 20, though, guys, it came with almost six minutes left in the game. Oklahoma was able to chew up the rest of the clock, work, matriculate down the field, but give a lot of credit to Quinn Sharp for placing the football where he did there on that play. Hypel's hype of the game was the 18-yard touchdown run by Brennan Clay in overtime to give Oklahoma the victory. The Stoopsie stop of the night was Aaron Colburn, interception to Clint Schulf, third down in the second quarter. It was third and short, third medium, I should say. Um, if they capitalize on that, that's at least a field goal, but Oklahoma intercepts the ball. Uh, overall, uh, the three main goals for the night is offensively was to get started quick. They did a good okay job at this. Okay, but not great job at this. Uh, they really, really, really um, would have done a lot better if they would have kicked the field goal. Made me feel a little bit better about putting this, putting this in. But then you don't do that. You give them the ball back. You give them the ball back again, and then you're down two scores. But overall, they did okay with doing that. Uh, defensively, you have to be careful. Oklahoma State loves to score the football, and um, they never let up. Oklahoma just played guns out. Um, Oklahoma, in fact, defense, as far as Tony Jefferson and the Mike Stoops and those guys on the defense, they trailed the entire regulation except for that last play and the beginning of the fourth quarter. So except for the beginning of the fourth quarter and the final play of the game, basically they were playing they were playing from behind the whole game. So my hat goes off to those guys for uh, making capitalizing on those situations. And special teams, just do what you do. Just be special. Tress was special tonight. Only had to punt it twice, but got a bootleg of a long of a 30, 54-yard field goal. Michael Honeycutt was pretty special in his own right, 3 for 4. If he kicks the 1 and goes 4 for 4, then like I said, there's no need for overtime, and Oklahoma ends up winning the ball game. But if wishes were horts, candies and nuts, we'd all have a Merry Christmas. Doesn't matter. Didn't go through. Bedlam is over. Oklahoma wins. They have a chance now to play for the Big 12 Championship. Another trophy could be in... This man right here, that man right there, Barry Switzer, could be in his Hall of Fame uh, uh, little reward award uh, statue, Switzer Center, by the end of next week. Let's hope that's so. Uh, by the way it stands right now, it will at least partially be theirs. They are tied with Kansas State. To uh to officially uh get there to officially get it outright and to be officially invited to the Sugar Bowl or Fiesta Bowl or wherever they go by the Big Twelve be, slash BCS no questions asked somebody has got to beat Kansas State and you know who you are and that's all I'm gonna say is beat Kansas State uh Boomer sooner everybody have a great holiday weekend. I hope everyone did have a great holiday weekend, that is. And as always, Boomer Sooner!